Hi, this is Pete Cleary from Dodge Nature Center. Summer can be a great time for adventures out in nature. And whether you're at Dodge, a park near your house, or even your own backyard, here are some tips and tricks for making your outdoor adventures safe this summer. First, before you leave, tell an adult where you're going to be and when you'll be back, and that way they'll know when to expect. Second, find a friend to go along with you. Company is always good, and you're safe for traveling in groups. Third, don't forget your sunscreen. Protect your skin from those UV rays. Fourth, bug spray. Again, protect your skin from mosquitoes, flies, and ticks. And it'll make you much more comfortable when you're outside. But with all those things to think about, we're out the door and I can show you more. And to make you more comfortable while you're outside and out hiking, if you plan on going off trail, long pants that are light colored will help protect you from stinging nettle, from thistle, and from ticks. They'll be a little bit easier to see. Um, and they allow you to go wherever you would like. Uh, boots are in that same fashion, but if you're more comfortable in shoes, they work just as well. One other thing to avoid while you're out hiking, stinging nettle or itchweed. Uh, the stem and the leaves are covered in stinging hairs that can poke through and puncture into your soft skin and give you an irritation that feels something like about halfway between static electricity and a mosquito bite. Lasts for about a day. On the harder parts of your skin, on the uh, surface of your hand, won't be able to poke through and so that might be okay. But if you're walking through and you're wearing shorts, you will feel it. One way to avoid that again, long pants. Pants. For safety around bees, wasps, and hornets, leaving them alone will have them leave you alone. Use a calm voice, move slowly, and if you happen to be next to their house, back up again slowly. If you do happen to get stung, make sure you get the stinger out and put an ice pack onto the sticks. Boots. One of the harder things to avoid is poison ivy. Um, you're gonna see a lot of three-leafed plants out in nature as you're walking. And generally, if you stay on the trail, you'll avoid poison ivy. However, if you brush by poison ivy and the oil gets onto your clothes, it can still raise red bumps up wherever that oil might touch your skin in a reaction that'll happen at least eight to 12 hours after you first touch the oil. The plants can sometimes be hard to see. This one right here in the trail has been mowed and is a very small poison ivy plant. When you look a little bit more closely, you can see the three leaf shape of poison ivy just at the side of the trail. There. Pants. So eventually you are going to get a tick on you if you're out and about and out in nature. And I'll show you the removal process for getting a tick off of you. Ready? When you see the tick crawling on your pants, and again, this is why pants are such a good thing, you're gonna use a two-fingered method for removing. Take your two fingers and you grab onto the tick, pulling it off your pants, and then throw it to somewhere where you're not going to be. Very simple process. Again, I'll show you this in slow motion. Bring in your two fingers. Grab onto the tick. And throw it someplace where you're not going to. If a tick happens to get into your skin, and that's going to take a number of hours, um, if it gets beyond you pulling them off of your pants or you finding them when you get home and check yourself and it's burrowed into your skin, get an adult and have them get a very, very pointy tweezers to grab the tick by the head and pull it right out of your skin. Um, don't do what my parents did. Don't get something on fire and try to t burn the tick out. That's not a real thing. Doctors will tell you, take a, t uh, take a tweezers and just pull the tick out by the head. If it was a deer tick, then you need to talk to your doctor about getting some antibiotics to treat you for Lyme's disease. Um, but if it's just a wood tick like you've seen here, simply remove it and then treat it just like you got a mosquito bite. Oops. So a word about geese. They're very fun to watch. They're very cute when they're young, um, but parents will tell you when it's time to back up and when you've gotten close enough. And you really do need to honor their thought on that. They're just protecting their babies. And that's the thing that you need to listen for. So when you're getting close, you'll hear a sound that sounds suspicious. You're like, I'm 
that is the warning that they're giving to you to back up from their videos. So here, here, and I'll do it, but just barely. Know that I'm only showing. And then you'll know that this is close enough to let them have their room. And don't cut off their exit if they're trying to make it down to a pond. Just follow without chasing. And you'll be able to watch the wildlife. So when you're watching wildlife, keep your distance. Make sure the animal feels comfortable doing what it wants to do. Rather than interrupting her, she's eating so she can back and feed her fawns. We'll just watch her from this distance and let her do what she wants to do. Boots! Oh, and paint. So a word about safety around animals. And the safety around animals is not so much how, um, how to keep yourself safe, it's how to keep the animals safe. If you see an animal out in nature, it is okay to actually pick it up. Some of them may not like it and some of them may react and you'll learn a lot about their defenses when you do that. But if you're gentle and can take great care with them and get them back to someplace safe when you're done, it might be an okay way to learn more about frogs or toads or turtles. Toads don't give you warts when you pick them up, um, but you'll find almost always they're drinking a little extra water that they'll put on you when you're done. Um, if you catch a frog like this, hold them gently so that you can have their legs that there. Um, and you can feel what they're like. Try not to poke them in the eye, but actually if you look close, you can see that their eye has a little membrane that flips up, covers their eye when they're swimming. Um, but once you're done looking at them and you've got them and they're still safe, let them go somewhere safely. And this is a thing about turtles as well. You might see some of them crossing roads at some point. If you are able to self, uh, safely help them out and you've got to make sure that you're safe in any roadway, you can help by pushing them across to where they were pointing. Um, for the frogs, when you take them and put them back, put them next to the pond, if you find a little turtle, a tiny little turtle, and you take it down to the pond, put it next to the pond and it'll find its own way in. And that's what I'm going to do right now with this one. See buddy. Boop. But that's returning animals safely to the habitat that they were in. So when you're out hiking in the summer, you might come across some wildlife. And when you do, what you want to do is keep them safe while you are remaining safe but it is okay to get up close to them and sometimes it is even okay to pick them up but you got to do so safely and as i approach this turtle you watch me come in from the back of it and reach underneath grabbing both the bottom and top shelf as i pick it up from behind you don't want to pick them up by their long tail because that can actually break their bones on the inside and a small one like this might just need some help getting across the road safely if you can do that awesome get them across the road in the direction that they're already going. But if they, you can get them down closer to the edge of a pond and let them go nearby to it, even better. Um, for a snapping turtle like this, their neck is long enough that they can reach back just about to their back leg. And so you really do want to pick them up by the back end of the back end of their shell. Um, they do have claws and they will kick some. And so if you don't need to pick it up to get it across the road, if you can help it with the uh, just by pushing it with a stick that can sometimes go or you can just stand there and keep it safe while it's crossing the way. With snap turtle like this though rather than picking it up and taking it home um, it's best to probably just observe these where they are and then let them go back to doing just exactly what they were doing before. If you take them home and try to keep them at your house then you have to provide their habitat. You have to provide all of their food clean fresh water and a safe spot to be and for a long time that's not going to work out very well 
for a short visit, that might be great. Um, but they are much happier and will do much better out in the wild where they already live. So to keep them safe, take a chance to learn a little bit more about them, feel what their tail might be like, um, feel their shell, feel their claws, try not to feel anywhere around its face and head. And then when you're done, make sure that it gets to someplace safe and continue on your way. So a word about snakes. Minnesota is home to lots of interesting different kinds of snakes. And a lot of people spend time thinking about rattlesnakes. Minnesota is home to two different kinds of rattlesnakes. And if you encounter them while you're out walking, you're not allowed to pick up either kind. And whether it's a timber rattlesnake or a massasauga, you are not allowed to pick them up because they are protected by law from you for their safety. Um, massasaugas are endangered and timber rattlesnakes are threatened and so people are not allowed to touch them because their populations are going down. Um, that being the case, a lot of snakes in Minnesota will try to convince you that they're a rattlesnake, like this fox snake, for example. If you got close to a fox snake, and you saw it, and it saw you, it is gonna react by whipping its tail back and forth very quickly in the grass or the leaves, and it's gonna give off a rattling sound. And that's really a signal for you to not step on that snake. People stepping on snakes generally uh, results in less snakes. So, if you hear that rattling sound, you know that a snake is nearby, it's in your best interest to stop and look closely to see if you can find the snake that is making that noise so you don't step on it. A lot of snakes, if you try to pick them up, will give you the special surprise, and a fox snake is a prime example of that. After rattling to let you know not to get stepped on and try to drive you away, its protection for when you pick it up is going to be something kind of gross and horrible. It's going to poop on you and wipe it. And it adds in a little extra special glandular secretion that smells really, 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 really good. Fox snakes do it, garter snakes do it, red-bellied snakes do it. So if you're going to be brave enough to pick up a snake outside that you know is not a rattlesnake, and you're going to hold it in your hands, you're more than likely going to get it. It's one of the defenses that they have from trying, or to try not to get it. But um, if you end up picking up a snake and it tries to strike at you, you can watch it sometimes and they will strike at you with their mouth closed, which is crazy and scary and really not dangerous at all. And they'll strike at you with their mouth open sometimes. Again, it's really scary, but not very dangerous. The teeth on a snake, even this size, are really, really small and make really small pinpoint, uh, pinpoint wounds in your skin. But they're mostly for holding on to prey while they constrict it. And if you've noticed, the whole time that I'm holding on to this snake, I'm not making fast motions around its head. This one's quite used to people, actually. Um, and one that we use in a lot of programming, but we never move real closely around its head. It's flicking its tongue out constantly to pick up smells in the air. Um, but I don't smell like it's food. And so for me to move slowly and gently without squeezing on it too terribly hard, um, I can keep it very safe and feeling safe. And that way it's still just exploring territory around me and I've got good control. If I encountered one of these in the wild, I might pick it up, take a look at it. I'm going to get probably pooped on. And then I'm gonna let it go into safety and I'm gonna usually put it into cover somewhere. So rather than the short grass, sorry buddy, I will let it go in the tall grass. And that way it's got cover from the hawks that were just flying over a little bit earlier. Are you required to pick up snakes when you find them in the wild? Absolutely not. Can you do it? Yep, if you can do it and keep them safe and keep you safe. So approach them from the middle to the back, go slowly, pick them up, know what's going to happen next, you're going to get them, and then let them go into cover someplace when you're done. When you see a snake out on the trail, remember, it's eating a lot of small things that would be problematic if the snakes weren't around. So if you can keep people from harming snakes, that's much better for our environment. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Um, don't forget to get outside on your outdoor adventures and as always, stay safe. This is Pete from Dodge Nature Center saying, have a great summer. So a word on safety around bees, wasps, and hornets. If one happens to land on you, stay, oh my, is one on me? Is one, oh my God, I ow, think so. Oh my God, oh my God they're everywhere. <laughs>